sound a little bit. Okay, so we'll we'll hang around a little bit afterwards after the recording, but for now we're very happy to have uh, Jen Liu from the University of Minnesota, and he's going to tell us about funding for gluonic algae. Okay, great. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, I think I can hear you good dish uh, so just let me know if you have any questions uh, let's make it uh, interactive uh, we want to resume the in-person experience as much as possible okay exactly. so yeah. good good so so let's uh, begin okay uh, it, it doesn't really need the introduction but uh, nowadays we hear a lot about uh, uh, you know the um, let me get a laser pointer we hear a lot about axion like particles okay but uh, when we talk about axion particles, we're really mainly thinking about them in the particle regime. Uh, uh, we, we, most of the time, we just talk about the pseudoscalar. Okay, we think it can have various kind of pseudoscalar coupling to various particles. But uh, to fully justify its name of axion-like particles, we would like to come back to the essential coupling, right? Which is uh, to the gluons to to make a strong uh, connection to the strong CP and to axions. The question is, can we motivate that uh, scenario where the axion-like particles still couple to gluons uh, without the weird tuning of the EFT uh, uh, walls and coefficients? And can we also probe them? So the, I would dedicate this talk to my recent explorations along this line. Okay, so uh, you know we don't really need the introduction to the axions. Uh, um, you know, in the standard model, we can have this uh, theta gg dual term. And we also have those Yukawa couplings with CKM uh, uh, with uh, CP angles. The at low energy, there's an effective theta angle that is the, C, the uh, Lagrangian parameter theta plus the argument of determinant of the product of the those Yukawa couplings is constrained by the neutron EDM measurement to be smaller than 10 to minus uh, minus 10, and our uh, our measurement continues to improve. We kind of anticipate those couplings to be. Uh, you know, outer one, and uh, the fact that the, uh, the, the combination to be such a small value generates a puzzle, we call it the strong CP puzzle of QCD. Of course, people realize this, and there was an elegant dynamical solution after realizing that uh, uh, the QCD potential itself uh, is minimized at the effective theta bar uh, of zero. So if we make a, this angle a dynamical field, which we identify as the axion field, uh, uh, we can minimize the potential and make a consistent, uh, consistency with our low energy measurement. And such a dynamical degree of freedom, we call it, uh, we call it axia. Okay. Um, so the, the, this dynamical uh, field fix, uh, fix that angle at the low energy. Okay. So let's ask how good an imposter of uh, 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 you know, a zero CP angle this is. Okay. So the typical axion potential uh, at low energy is of the order 100 uh, MeV uh, to the fourth power of this cosine potential. Of course, in reality, the potential is more slightly more complex, but just to give you a sense, the energy scale associated with that is really lambda QCD ish. Okay, but to make such a uh, axion relax this angle. And to make a such an angle consistent with low energy measurement, we have to make sure the potential do not receive any contaminations that would uh, displace uh, 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 this effective theta angle. Okay, so in fact, to be consistent with this 10 to minus 10 constraint, we would uh, require this generic contamination scale to be smaller than 0.1 MeV. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, sometimes people identify this as a quality problem, which means the axion potential itself has to be with a really high quality that make it, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 subject to the contaminations, of, uh, you know, small corrections, small, uh, small contaminations. We have to really oh, make yeah, it. I have a question. You have two times the theta bar and theta prime. What's the difference? Ah, so the, the first term is the, uh, uh, let's call it QCD axion potential, okay? So minimizing this will, gi will give us a consistent measurement uh, uh, at low energy, like a neutron EDM, okay? However, if axion experience any other potential, right? Such as the second term, I'm writing just generically as a, as a possibility. Uh, uh, to be consistent with the neutron EDM, the second term has to be very small, okay? 
And the theta prime here, I'm just saying it's a generic uh, angle different uh, from the theta bar okay. of, uh, 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 of uh, the standard model like one I wrote down earlier. Okay. okay? So it just say uh, there's a, uh, uh, the, the potential has to be very, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, 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 to not experience other corrections that dislocates uh, its minimization location by more than 10 to minus 10. Okay. But we all know there are so many other scales in, uh, uh, in nature, like grand unified uh, uh, series scale, Planck scale, dark matter, et cetera. Okay. There are some uh, from a generic estimation, right? If we write down uh, 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 the gravity is uh, the, the Planck suppressed operator, okay? We, for, for, for instance, for a given axiom decay constant of 10 to 12 GeV, we need to forbid uh, the, the Planck suppressed operator, uh, you know, uh, uh, that have, uh, you know, less than 10 power of M Planck suppression, okay? Which means I have to really forbid, uh, you know, operators with lower dimensions that uh, uh, even, even if they are Planck suppressed. So with such, uh, such extreme uh, example, you can see that the uh, axion potential, uh, well, it's beautifully solved this from CP puzzle, but it also kind of fragile towards uh, 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 contaminations, even if the contamination is as small as, uh, you know, Planck scale suppressed operator to a high power, okay? So, of course, people have noticed this and tried the many different ways to solve this so-called axion quality problem. There are many other uh, uh, explorations. Uh, uh, let me just see if I can move the, the bar, okay. Uh, there are many other solutions uh, people tried uh, to solve the ICM uh, uh, problems with dedicated U UV structure, extra dimension, etc. However, we try to motivate uh, 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 both the, um, uh, the particle uh, real uh, like uh, GEV scale axiom like particle, but and also the strong CP uh, puzzle. Uh, we took a slightly different approach, okay? We try to reinforce the axiom potential uh, using a, a Z2 structure. Here's the uh, basic uh, sketch of the underlying model we are considering, okay? Let's, uh, let's copy uh, 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 the, uh, the standard model gauge structure to a, a QC, at least the QCD plus weak interaction and all the chiral matter fields and relates the Lagrangian parameters uh, by a Z2 symmetry. There's a one axion coupled to both sectors, our standard model sector and also the mirror sector. It solves both a strong CP puzzle dynamic, okay? Uh, for it be able to do so, it ha you know, there has to be a symmetry reason. Here we, we work a discrete Z2 symmetry under which uh, our SU2 goes to mirror SU2, our SU3 goes to mirror SU3. For the U1 sector, there's two choices and these have a different uh, cosmological considerations. Um, you can go to a different uh, U1 or come back to yourself. And also the matter field uh, uh, of our sector and the Z2 goes to the mirror sector, okay? So basically we copy the standard model uh, uh, particle uh, a gauge structure and a, a particle content, okay? And uh, we have an axion field coupled to both sectors. So we have the axion GG dual coupling and G, uh, G, prime, G prime dual coupling, okay? Um, so, so then, okay, by having such a structure, we hope to achieve and we have achieved an enhanced uh, reinforced axion potential. So on the right panel is again, uh, a typical QCD axion potential, okay? But with a mirror sector, we have another, uh, the mirror QCD generates another axion potential, which is, is uh, much higher in height, which which much higher scale. Let's see how we get there. Okay, so we basically achieve it by a very uh, a, a generic uh, uh, soft Z2 breaking as this mirror sector, as this Z2 symmetry is only broken by the heavy web of the uh, Higgs prime field. Okay, recall that we really essentially copied the, our standard model structure to the, to the mirror sector. The mass parameter of the Higgs prime uh, mu, mu prime squared can be much heavier than our sector. And this is uh, this, uh, the difference uh, and such a soft Z2 breaking is uh, quote unquote technical natural because when the mu prime and the mu equals each other, we restore a Z, exact Z2 symmetry, right? 
So this technical uh, uh, natural Z2, softer Z2 breaking will, having, will generate a large Higgs valve of the mirror sector, which will generate a massive fermions that decouples earlier and the mirror QCD runs faster and, uh, uh, and confined. Okay? Similar considerations has already, already been considered by uh, in a different context uh, 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 without such a phenomenology by my collaborator Anson Hook uh, uh, in, in the earlier work. But this one, we are trying to lay out this generic uh, uh, structure and its phenomenology. Okay, what's, so what's when the, the QC prime confines, question? What's the mass of the axion for that big step? What's the mass of the axion for the? Yeah. Uh, uh, with with this new uh, with this new uh, QC prime, right? So we'll see. Yeah. That's exactly the next line. Okay. Uh, well, the QCD axial is uh, is mass of this order. We would anticipate that with this new QC prime contribution, the axial mass is dominated by the this new potential, which will be generically lambda QCD prime to the fourth power divided uh, I phase squared. Okay. So there's there's more. Uh, uh, careful and uh, you know uh, control the calculation in various ways, uh, but uh, it's uh, generically consistent with this uh, parametric estimation. Maybe there's a coefficient, uh, uh, you know, of uh, 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 you know 0 0.7, 0 0.9 for 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 with the maximum uh, achievable axial mass. But that's some 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 details and uh, uh, of calculation and uh, realization. So basically, we reinforce the potential. Uh, uh, we are a Z2 a symmetric sector that has a larger QCD scale and that simultaneously generate a heavier axial mass, which will eventually motivate our consideration of uh, hunting for the gluonic ALP. Okay. So, uh, so basically let's revisit this, uh, 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 this reinforced potential, right? So the generic QCD potential is the first term. Our new potential, let's say the, um, our new potential for the mirror sector with the large Higgs valve can be as large as uh, hundreds of GeV, uh, sorry, uh, 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 MeV, GeV, hundreds of TeV uh, to the fourth power enhanced, okay? That makes the potential much more robust against the contaminations, right? Now we are really against, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of GeV scale contaminations uh, for the axion, uh, axion potential. So we really reinforce the axion uh, uh, potential by, by, by uh, uh, several others mainly. So, uh, so just to emphasize, if the Higgs mass were the only thing differs between uh, different between the two copies of the, uh, uh, the, the, the standard model, okay, the neutral angle are still the same, right? Flavor structure of the standard model and ensures that any changes uh, occurs at a very high loop orders. So basically the theta bar here for our sector and the theta bar prime for the middle sector due to this Z2 relation, they are really close to each, they, are, they really equal each other, uh, uh, you know, with very high loop order small corrections that is well, uh, 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 well within the uh, experimental uncertainties. So in essence, such a simple sketch of the, uh, of the reinforced axiom potential would work. Um, but let's be completely honest. The, uh, I'm breaking the Z2 symmetry. I actually secretly I might generate a new quality problem, right? For instance, I can also anticipate the underlying theory could give me such kind of dimension six operator that uh, that uh, proportional to the Higgs uh, field. So when the Higgs prime field uh, and the Higgs Higgs, and Higgs prime pick up a valve. Further, this you know also uh, 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 you know generates a, a di uh, difference uh, in the QCD potential between our sector and the mirror sector. Okay, so in essence, if we require, uh, 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 we don't generate a large enough uh, uh, separation between the two QCD potentials when the Higgs pick up a valve. We would require uh, at the dimension six level, we, we would require the Higgs prime uh, valve uh, to be smaller than ten to the fourteen GeV. Okay, so which means, we, well, we are solving the old quality problem. The new, there's a new quality problem that uh, rest, uh, rest, restricts our Higgs uh, prime valve to be uh, to not to be too huge. Okay, uh, that puts constraints on our model. Okay, 
So after seeing all this, let's just take a look at the parameter space. And that's why we are excited in exploring this region. Not only because we are thinking about the generic, uh, you know, pseudo scalar phenomenology, but rather we are motivating its connection to the strong CP puzzle and the quality problem, okay? As a function of axial mass, what is the one over, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, FG is a convention many people use. So it's really just one over F, uh, decay constant times some normalization factor. Okay. Question? Yeah. Question. So you're forbidding, uh, so I'm just curious what your assumptions are uh, about the higher dimension operators, because you could certainly have an operator that is linear in capital Phi or U1, J. Quinn breaking Higgs, and if you gave that a Planck scale coefficient, you know nothing would help you, right? Ah. So you're, you're are you, I'm just asking, what are your working set of rules? There's some working set of assumptions. Are you yeah. are you forbidding? I'm guessing it's something like you're you're forbidding for unknown reasons operators of dimension four and below and allowing operators of dimension five and above suppressed ah. by order one coefficient times m plank or what what are your rules yeah yeah sure 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 the that, that's, uh, Marcus. The, the, oh, the, the, yeah. yeah this is uh so you're talking about what's my working assumption about the original particular quality problem right what you know what uh, yeah. what's the size you, of, you uh, say did you solve yeah, yeah. What, what is the quality problem that you're solving Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so we we in this work we uh, we assume or uh, uh, we assume the the Planck uh, uh, scale contamination to the uh, uh, axion potential enters at the dimension six level. So we want to make the potential to be robust against uh, you know Planck square surprised uh, surprised uh, 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 operators of the axion field. So phi to the six divided by Planck squared. Yeah, you're allowed to use any assumptions you want, but is there any particular physical motivation for that assumption? Yeah, so um, so it it, it it depends on the uh, I, um, yeah. So that 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 I have to say, I don't I don't fully I don't I don't fully confident in in commenting on the the theory behind that. But it, 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 given that we have, uh, a, you know, a, at least a Z2 uh, 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 discrete symmetry, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's what we written in the paper, it's, it's plausible the contamination only enters at dimension six level. I don't have any strong argument. Okay. That's gonna be, yeah. I mean, you still, so you still need some level of an accidental symmetry, but not as much somehow. Yeah, not as much, not as like, a, you know, five to the 14th power, we really just say dimension six level. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so that's the, but this, uh, this uh, bottom right region, just to be consistent, large uh, axial mass uh, means uh, I, I need the large lambda for a fixed decay constant, I need the large lambda QCD prime. But because the Higgs value can only be so large to ensure I don't generate a new quality problem. From the Higgs valve, Higgs prime valve, uh, I cannot allow the axial mass to be so 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 heavy because otherwise my uh, the needed Higgs valve prime will be too large. Okay, then just ask what uh, Mark just asked. Uh, we assume uh, uh, somewhat uh, you know ad hoc or reasonable depending on your viewpoint and your mastery of the, the theory. Uh, we say we we want to require our potential to be robust against uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, such a dimension six operator that is suppressed by Planck uh, Planck's uh, scale. Then uh, uh, this uh, such consideration removes uh, the bottom left corner of the parameter space uh, because otherwise the 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 uh, for for a larger decay constant those uh, such a Planck suppressed. Uh, uh, operator still generic, uh, generate a large enough contamination to my potential, okay? So the third uh, excluded region is for just as simple as consistent axion EFT, right? So here, when the, uh, when the axion mass being too heavy, uh, uh, we would require too low a decay constant. Uh, we, of course, don't want the decay constant to be smaller than lambda QC prime for consistency. 
And the upper left corner is really the diagonal line is the QCD axion line. And we want the axion to be heavier than the QCD axion. In fact, this is not a necessary uh, assumption because the experiments already excluded this region. But uh, our, our point is with such a basic and generic setup, we actually have a, a confined region to consider and to count for, okay? We would call this the theory line of opportunity. That is really nicely in the particle realm in around the GeV with, of course, plus minus three orders magnitude with a decay constant generically of the order PeV scale, 100 is TeV or PeV scale, okay? So let's take a look at the, what's the experimentally allowed region, okay? All those uh, gray shaded region are excluded by ex uh, existing experiments. This part by the collider experiments, this part by the uh, uh, um, like uh, 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 like B factories, etc. There's also beam dump constraints, also a supernova constraint that's also BBN plus N effective, etc. So we can see uh, we are uh, the current active experimental probes already poke into this regime, but still leaves uh, a big region for us to explore. Okay, but let's take a look at uh, what's the what are the constraints. Okay, so here I, uh, I uh, in my preparation of uh, of my talks, I, uh, I I in my earlier preparation, I flipped the axis. So following is axial mass, the vertical axis is axial decay constant Fa. Okay, with the top left uh, EFT written here. Okay, so we can see. Uh, you already noticed the collider constraints are really weak because the scale they are constraining is only in terms of GeV. Well, the axial mass is already, uh, you know, up to TeV. It's a totally terrible EFT, okay? But uh, that's what you get if you translate the collider searches uh, of, uh, uh, on the surface value, okay? Also, you realize to uh, one way to UV complete and to generate such an operator would require collider particles Running a loop to at the corresponding scales, okay. But we haven't seen color particle below two TeV at the DLC. So from such a direct uh, uh, particle search, you also would forbid the um, the effect the the axion uh, uh, like particle theory below those lines. Uh, okay. So you may naively ask, okay, this is a terrible EFT, and uh, you know a collider search. Why collider searches are so poor? Okay. So uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, so two parallel lines are just uh, you know to generate this such an axion EFT. I uh, you know one UV complete I know is I put uh, uh, you know a, 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 a color formula in you know at this scale to generate such EFT, right? So uh, uh, having no uh, color state below two TeV. If the wall zone coefficient is one, I would forbid uh, you know, uh, uh, any EFT, uh, any axion EFT below this line. Or if I assume the, the, the fermion coupling to axion can be as large as the unitary, unitarity boundary, then I would exclude the axion EFT below the, this line. Okay, it's just a different strength of the, so axion interaction, you cover like couplings with, uh, with underlying fermions. Okay. okay? Okay, so, but this is really just to tell, to let you questioning why the search is so poor, okay? Of course, let's zoom in, okay? We zoom in, this is the axial mass in linear scale. This vertical axis is the axial decay constant uh, in, in, in this uh, uh, translation, okay? We can see they are dominated by dipotent searches. That's essentially what we can do at the particle collider environment, right? Uh, I, the, I, uh, uh, to search for clean photons, right? Even in the uh, B factories, right? So, however, the reason we suddenly push ourselves into such an uncomfortable region is really because we have a, a standard to make the axion like a particle to have connections with strong CP and do not generate, do not assume a strange hierarchy between those uh, uh, if, uh, Wilson coefficients. In any case, whenever the GED Wilson coefficients is not significantly smaller than the others, okay, it's a defining coupling for strong CP and will also dominant the axion property, uh, uh, like particle property, okay? So when we search for the photonic decay, um, uh, it's only uh, like 10 to the minus three or 10 to the minus four rare decay mode of the axion-like particle. 
So because such a, a read suppression of, uh, of such a dipole down signal, it make it uh, uh, very ineffective, okay? And we can, we can only search for the photon, uh, the photon decay because the hadronic modes are buried in the QCD background. Okay? So now we understand, we motivated the region, we make connection to the strong CP puzzle. We, we even try to make connection to say this help uh, you with the quality problem, but it seems like uh, impossible to search. And we are, uh, we are, the current searches are all very uh, 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 ineffective, okay? So we'll, we identify again, this new, this land of theory of opportunities shrink to this land of uh, a particle physics search opportunities and the challenges. And we want to see how can we conquer this region, okay? This leads to the uh, particle of phenomenological explorations of the, 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 the hunt for gluonic ALP. Okay. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, axion property. Okay. As a function of the axion like particle mass, this is the, fun the decay, uh, partial decay width. The diphoton decay is here, and the gluonic, uh, you know, hadronic decay induced by the gluonic coupling uh, is uh, the blue line. We can see it's dominant uh, over the diphoton by three or four orders magnitude. Uh, in different regime. But what's important is if you say, if you see the decay constant of a PEV scale, which is at the center of the motivated region, regime, we can see the lifetime of the axia can be outer centimeters, okay? So that makes it interesting uh, that axia could be long-lived. Maybe there's a hope to see them as the exotic long-lived signature. Sorry, can I ask a question? I think sure. I, I did really understand your last discussion very much, but can you just say, uh, what is your assumption about the strength of the photon coupling? Are you assuming uh, that they're roughly in relation to the to the gauge couplings? Or what is your assumption that fixes the, the photon coupling? Sure, sure, sure. So uh, you can view it from different angle, but let's uh, do this uh, EFT, if you can see the upper right corner here. Yeah, so what are you assuming for, you know, C3 versus C1 and yeah. C? Yeah, so, so basically I'm assuming, so to de derive any plot, right, you need to assume a relation, right? So here I assume the uh, C1, C3, C2, C3 equal each other. They're all okay. other ones. Okay, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. So this, uh, this is what I call generic, okay? Of course, if you assume sure. C, uh, C1, C2, a factor of three, Larger doesn't matter, so that only slightly changed this result. But we're still in yeah. a very uncomfortable regime. It's really because the the diphoton decay never dominates, while the most powerful search is the diphoton channel, right? So, yeah. so that that's why the gluonic ALP hasn't been effectively searched for, and uh, that's a challenge. And we are trying to right. see if we can do something. Okay. So here's another representation, right? Uh, if you, we set the decay constant here uh, of the diphoton equals the gluonic one, which, which means the Watson coefficient of uh, one, you see there's a hierarchy between the decay branchings. Okay. Um, so then, uh, so having with its decay, it can be long lived. Maybe there's a hope to see them, but of course uh, we, with uh, such a high decay constant, we have to see if we can produce enough of axia. I think it was totally uh, luck that uh, we at, uh, you know, at uh, the, when axion can be long lived, that they have a slimmer of hope to be seen at the colliders, the production rate is acceptable, okay? So here are the four decay constant of 100 TeV. Uh, we can have even 10 to the five axion inclusively. Uh, for PeV decay constant, we reduce that by two orders of magnitude, right? But, uh, and if we, we instead requ require the axion is produced in association with uh, a jet with minimal PT, or the, uh, our system has some HT, uh, you know, scalar sum of all the hadronic activities in the transverse point to be greater than certain value, we still have a thousand or 10,000 of axions, okay? With the PEV decay constant, we still have a 10 to 100 of them. So, so we are totally lucky that in a long-lived regime, we have a certain, you know, no too small axion production rate, okay? Thanks to the, the large gluon uh, uh, pattern distribution function, okay? And in this plot, uh, which was a different matching scale and, uh, uh, and the variation of the, uh, uh, and use a band to show you the uncertainties. 
And you can see uh, this calculation is actually uh, uh, quite uncertain. We'll uh, talk about it later to see how we can improve that. Okay. So having, having such number of axions and uh, have the insight that axion-like particles, motivated axion-like particles might be long-lived, we can further the study by uh, you know, uh, uh, thinking about how to catch them. Okay, so given the low rate and the small lifetime, the lifetime is still like uh, uh, you can see still centimeter level, okay, or tens of centimeter level in this regime. Uh, and the production rate is not that high. Uh, divide this number by two orders magnitude to have the same uh, decay constant. We need to catch every axion we produce. Okay, there's not too much room for us to play with. So we have to invoke uh, a trigger that is to, to record such a rare and uh, rarely produced event, axion and decay with displacement. So we so far, we don't have a lonely particle trigger to look for those kind of signature. However, there are CMS proposals to have such a trigger, generic low level lonely particle trigger. We modify such trigger slightly to require a few displaced tracks uh, with certain quality factors and uh, impact parameter, uh, uh, the track displacement from the interaction point uh, that, that we believe is sufficient uh, uh, rate suppression that can be, uh, can be implemented in the trigger system and also simple enough can be implemented in the trigger system. So this allows us to record those uh, very scarce uh, you know, axions, uh, axion-like particles. Okay, so basically we're trying to use the fact that the, the axion light particle is, uh, this is a transverse plane produced at the cross point, travel a certain distance, decay to different tracks. We can reconstruct them and they are coming from the same cluster. While the random track background wouldn't fix a common, uh, a common vertex. Okay, so after triggering, you record the signal events with certain uh, tens of percent the trigger efficiency. So I lost uh, you know, factor field signal already. Okay, uh, but even though we can keep the signal, we still are dominated by the background. It's about the estimate from us by to be about 10 to the 12 of background events of random tracks in the detector, which are basically uh, fake tracks. Uh, Marcus, question. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I'm just trying to, you're talking about the triggers and you're talking yeah. about tracks, but I, 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 this, this axion is decaying to two jets, yes? It's yes, decaying yes. ionically, so it's decaying to two jets. I guess it's mm -hmm. pretty light. It's decaying to two pions or something. I don't know. What is it? And these yeah, tracks. Well, so, yeah. So I'm confused why you're talking about three tracks. <laughs> and I'm also wondering like, if it's just a couple of hadrons, are you really going to you really have those as objects in your trigger? Can you just say yeah. a little bit more about what these tracks are exactly in, a, yeah. in, a, in an example event? Yeah, sure. That, that's an extremely good point. So that goes to the details of the axion decay property calculation. Uh, for, uh, so for the axion mass below 102 GeV, the, the exclusive decay uh, is a more proper calculation, like uh, the axion decay to three pi ions. Uh, yeah. uh, decay to uh, uh, you know uh, you know kions and pions etc. Uh, uh, so those exclusive modes can be calculated and uh, people can study what's the trigger efficiency. Here we are assuming in this in this part of the work at the RC we're assuming axion is above uh, one or two GeV. So I can still use the jets as a description. Collimated jets they can hadronize into different uh, number of tracks, neutral and uh, charged uh, particles. So uh, uh, I, I'm re only requiring for this trigger consideration to at the low level to see a few charged tracks. The, each track has displacement. So we require more than three charged tracks with a certain PT and a high quality uh, in terms of uh, the track reconstruction and with certain displacement. This transverse impact parameter basically tells you how displaced the, the tracks are. I, mean, I so, guess I just had, I guess I'm asking because I guess I had the impression that uh, that triggers were not on individual hadron tracks. Triggers dealt with jets, and it used some pretty crude definition of jet that needed to have a lot of energy 
I, I, I don't know. I'm just asking. But uh, I mean, sure, they sure. really are you saying they could really, you know, I mean, these tracks are are you know they're boosted because the the alt is boosted, right? But it's only not going to be that many tracks. And you're saying that the trigger can can look at those. The trigger is going to look at individual hydronic tracks, or it will see this as a jet. I'm I'm just asking if the trigger. Ah uh, yes yes that. yes. So in fact in fact uh, the that's technical details. Okay, depend on you're talking about low level trigger or high level tri trigger. So here we are. We are talking about level one trigger. It's a very low level trigger. There, we don't have any jet algorithm, big jet algorithm. We basically see a right. class of energy definition. Then we say that defines the region of interest. We look for the 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 consistency hits that uh, you know uh, you know essentially uh, very straight uh, uh, hits in the tracker system if they can connect to two lines. If there are few lines, each of the lines is considered as a track. They, we wouldn't try to identify them as hadrons or anything. It's really just uh, you know inner trackers, uh, layers of pixels, which is uh, uh, connecting those dots in in, uh, in 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 the in the in the system. The the right. computation is uh, has been estimated to be fast enough that it's possible to do a low level uh, uh, displaced track trigger. The technical details are really more uh, are written in those uh, the CMS design report uh, up to the right corner. Okay. We, yeah, it, it, it is computationally possible, and in fact, in detail, they are using this uh, some, you know, uh, I forgot the full name, common uh, common filter uh, for to 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 connect the random hit the, the hits in the in the in the in the tracking system and identify a field. Okay. Well, if Yuri Gerstein has looked at it, it probably makes sense at some level. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, that's a very, very nice question. Yeah. So so in fact, we do pay a lot of price for signal rate already at this level because sometimes signal don't give me you know good enough tracks with high BT. Uh, uh, this is actually one of the big factors of uh, signal efficiency loss that we have. Okay. In principle, we here we are kind of conservative. Uh, 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 we basically we made them very minimal modification, reasonable modifications to the proposed the displaced track trigger. Uh, uh, if one can be more smart or aggressive, they can achieve a better signal efficiency. Okay. So then that's after the trigger, we have 10 to the 12 background events. We would ask ourselves, can we really see them uh, you know, with low background? As I mentioned, uh, we don't have so many axion produced. Uh, so we have to be super careful uh, you know, with uh, uh, losing too much signal efficiency, but still you know, keep on surprising the background. So here's the non another non-trivial part, okay? So no one knows how those uh, backgrounds are made of, okay? What's the property, okay? There's only empirical modeling. They are, of course, not a standard model background. If it's a standard model background, we can simulate, we know there's no very few of such background can fake and displace the axia. The dominant background is actually from so-called fake tracks. That is the accidental connection between random hits in random light up in my uh, in my tracking system. Tracking system are layered pixels. Uh, if, you know each uh, have different uh, you know resolution, just like your camera. Sometimes they, let, they light up. So RC is such a busy environment. There are so many of them lighting up all the time. So you can you can make accidental cancel uh, connections to reconstruct tracks from them. So those random tracks have very broad distribution in all dimensions, okay? In time, in displacement, uh, in, uh, in directions. So uh, as you can, the, the, the background are really made from them, from empirical modeling. Uh, that is not built in for any simulator. So we have to model it ourselves, uh, read from those technical design report, make an estimation. Okay, with the empirical property of each individual uh, uh, fake tracks, one can study what's the likelihood for the random red uh, fake tracks to fit uh, to fit a common vertex that is displaced uh, from the interaction point. So in the transverse plane, let's require all the tracks to be coming from a common vertex with the high with a high certainty, and also that the vertex is displaced from the interaction point. With a reasonable requirement within the detector resolution, uh, you know we view it as a post-trigger, uh, uh, you know offline analysis or high-level trigger analysis. 
you can reduce the, the background rate in the transverse plane information alone by you know, eight times 10 to the minus two by asking them to be a common vertex and displaced. So here's another property of this in particle modeling of the displaced tracks and how they perform in term of displacement, which is a fixed uh, uh, best fit point of the common vertex and uh, the uncertainty of that vertex, which is represented by the circle, okay? That minimizes the distance between different tracks. So then uh, you can also extrapolate this information to the, uh, uh, you know, from the transverse plane to the Z direction. So you can connect, the, uh, uh, you can come from the best fit point and extrapolate all those uh, uh, displaced tracks, uh, fake tracks, and to see if they fit a common vertex in the Z direction as well. And uh, it, it, the, of course, a random track, it's really hard for them to fit a common vertex. Well, as for a signal, they will be really coming from the same vertex. So there's a, there will be a high efficiency. So the transverse plane, the, 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 sorry, the Z direction provide another two order magnitude suppression. Uh, and also you would ask those tracks to be consistent in a time domain as well. So it's basically a four dimensional 4D fit uh, for the common vertex to be consistent with the uh, axion, uh, displaced axion signal that provides another three order magnitude suppression within the, current, the detector performance uh, uh, we're having already. Okay, so with all those combined, we are able to altogether reduce the 10 to the 12 random background to 10 to the three. Okay, that's just using the tracking information alone. Tracking have a little bit of timing information as well, Tra having the tracking information alone. However, you know, any consistent axion like particle decay into hadrons, they will do energy deposition in the calorimetries, hadronic calorimeter. If we match the information there, you'll be able to provide another a uh, few hours of magnitude of the suppression. So it's not the entirety. So it's very possible that we can reduce the background to be order one, which is manageable. By combining- Sorry, what's the signal efficiency? What's the signal efficiency? The signal efficiency through this process, the post analysis, uh, 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 this uh, 40 feet, because the signal come from a common vertex, the signal efficiency is really high. Right. I only pay the price when I fail to reconstruct the theory location, the, the signal location uh, uh, precisely. So signal reconstruction efficiency at this step is high, like uh, ninety percent or so. While the trigger efficiency is low, tens of percent. Okay, but this is a this post uh, uh, this post trigger analysis really provide a big uh, background suppression because background are just random lines in my detector. It's really hard for them to be. Uh, you know, consistent in all four dimensions and plus matching other sub detectors. So with such a consideration, uh, it's not- uh, 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 You think the standard model background is not a uh, problem like the B meson decay or K meson decay? Yeah, so, so for instance, uh, the K on decay, uh, the K on decay uh, for instance, the dimuons. It will be displaced, it will be dimuon. It wouldn't provide me three displaced tracks to begin with. And it's also not hadronic. We can easily identify the, uh, 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 the, 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 the you know, electromagnetism is always the easiest one to, to, to identify. The, then for the B meson. So B, B meson lifetime is about, uh, uh, is, is about 100, uh, uh, 450 microns. Here we have a minimal displacement of uh, 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 500 microns. Uh, that plus the tra the transverse impact parameter. Uh, 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 let me see. Where uh, did I write it? Uh, uh, yeah, this is a, a very fit quality. Uh, we we have a transverse impact parameter bigger than uh, 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 one millimeter. Okay, so those two requirements already remove the B. Uh, B meson background very effectively. In fact, uh, people show that it, for displaced gen search, they remove the B meson background completely already. Okay, so so in essence, those those standard model background, you know, whatever we can come up with, actually are easily simulatable and uh, 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 rejectable. Yeah. So you veto the muon. Yeah, you can veto the muon to to. 
uh, to, to, you can veto the mule, but you, 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 are so, you have so much more control, right? You don't even need to make a veto the mule because here I require three tracks. The K on the K2 die mule wouldn't give me that even. And uh, of course, if I want to veto the mule, I can veto. But you know, there are so many extra handles. A any standard model particle, we, we know how to handle it. Yeah. Can you take the three Yeah. So yeah, you so here we require three charged objects. Uh, so the, the the three charged objects actually I already pay a signal price, right? I have two jet two 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 uh, axion decay two two quarks. They did that to hydronize into different number uh, of particles. Three, three charged uh, your uh, your axion has to be quite heavy, right? It's also not so easy to get three charged uh, uh, charge objects. Can I, yeah. can I ask? I mean, is there is there a background that you would be afraid of if you tried to go to two charge tracks? Is it just that all of these coincidence cuts get significantly worse? Yeah. So is that why you didn't do two charge tracks? Yeah. Uh. Uh. So, sorry. Uh. I, I, uh. I don't know if I if Chinja just uh, earlier he was asking a question or giving a comment. Then later, Marcus, you asked a question. Sorry, right? why don't you ask? He he was saying that you yeah. still have three pi. You, you, you need a three charge track. You, you are you are actually needs to be quite heavy, right? So it is bigger than EV, right? You need to. Yes, yes. So in this collider LC search, we are focusing on a more than GeV scale. We don't think about the lighter ones, two GeV and above even. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the Marcus, you're asking a question? Yeah, I was just asking, uh, you must have thought about two charge tracks, right? It's much yeah. easier to get. Is it just that your, your vertex reconstruction is not as doesn't have as many coincidences, and so you just get too much background. Yeah. What so, happens with these? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. So of course, well, uh, uh, I, I thought about uh, you, that. You're right. Yeah. So I thought about uh, uh, two uh, 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 two charger tracks. The real worry for me is uh, uh, I I may give I may overload the the trigger. Here, okay. If I only okay. require two uh, uh, two charge tracks, this rate will be too high. That you know, basically take up all the bandwidth of my detector data flow. No collaboration would allow that. So right. uh, I'm basically using the uh, the the estimation from those experimental paper to to come up with this plausible uh, scenario. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Of course. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Those are all great questions. Let's let's say. So let me just be clear, okay? So uh, it's already uh, nice to see there's a chance to see this uh, hydronic decaying axions. And we try really hard to say it is sounds reasonable that we can come up with a reasonable trigger that people is not too wild. And it's possible to have enough spatial information and time information for us to surprise the background. And let's take a look at uh, what's, the, what's the rich. The horizontal axis is axion mass, work, vertical axis is axion decay constant, okay? Again, one can consider those are the different lifetimes of axions in the, in the grades. So uh, just depend, really, we don't know what's the, what's the minimal trigger we need, okay? Yeah. Because uh, we can, to be conservative, we can require a lot of hydronic activities which the, you know, the energy uh, 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 transverse uh, uh, energy, a scalar sum of all the hydronic activity in the collider to be more than 100 GeV, then we can only cover you know, up to 10 GeV regime. Or if we only just require a larger than 30 GeV PT jet, uh, we can even cover up to 20 GeV uh, in, the, in this uh, motivated axial mass versus decay constant plane. Okay, so back to the theory plane. With such a hard work, okay, to motivate the region and to think about that at the RC, I think we can cover this uh, region, okay. Depend on your viewpoint, it might be exciting or not exciting, but I think it's an attempt to, to cover this region, and uh, 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 it's uh, uh, if it's possible to do that with the the current planned hardware, 
uh, of the of the uh, LHC. And so we hope this first uh, work motivate the consideration and uh, 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 enable us to future work to explore this. Uh, uh, in fact, I believe uh, it's possibly and probably reasonable to expect whenever if our experimental friends are uh, you know onto this signal, they can improve trigger, they can improve the analysis. Uh, 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 selection efficiency, they probably will be able to in, enlarge this region by some, uh, uh, you know, visible, visible uh, uh, um, improvement. Okay, so uh, I would also like to mention the nice work done in uh, in the Davis group uh, by Xinjia, uh, uh, Ling Feng, and uh, Anio et al. on the theory of dark fire and the nice phenology discussion in there. Uh, it's kind of uh, echoes. Uh, 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 it's a different theory set up, but I cause our uh, uh, our you know interesting phenomenology. Yeah. Yeah, we look for new ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> so so this signal is really hard. Uh, uh, so we are pushing the limit of the observation. Okay. So now I'm uh, slightly I'm kind of uh, running out of time. What's a typical uh, uh, like uh, protocol here? Uh, I I will strictly uh, with time, or I can go somewhat over. Uh, well, let's let's let's. Can you can you try to finish in uh, uh, in fifteen minutes, and then we can have more discussion afterwards? Does that sound okay? Oh, sounds okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. So okay. so let me let me just uh, uh, give you some uh, uh, flavor of several more recent work I'm working on along this line. Okay. So really, let's think about the open parameter space in here. Right. Right, so it spans over a large range, right, with a typical scale of the decay constant, but it's really a GeV scale physics, right? GeV, not really the TeV scale physics that we are not probing here uh, yet. Okay, uh, can we do better? Okay, so obviously uh, a natural uh, a place to look for TeV scale physics is uh, in the neutrino experiments, although they are designed to, uh, you know, measure neutrino properties. Okay, I pr smash proton to it, produce the uh, neutrinos, and they have a near detector to, to measure properties, and then a far detector to measure properties to see the oscillation, etc. It's a naturally a beam dumped experiment. Okay, we, I'm smashing a high intensity of 1.8 GeV beam protons onto the target. I can produce tons of standard model pseudo scalar mesons. Uh, you know, they can be an effective portal to, to the axions. The axion can fly and decay in the near detector. And the near detector, uh, you know, although it's designed to measure neutrino property, they have complex enough infrastructure that can have enough capability to identify the axion decays. So my collaborators and I went forth to study what's the, uh, what's the doing sensitivity. Just want to see the potential and try, uh, you know, want to make the case for you know, making doom uh, the, such an uh, experiment to have some BSM um, power, right? So here's axion flux. So people have been estimating axion flux as a factor of mass versus the, you know, flux per, uh, which is per centimeter squared uh, uh, with 10 years running of uh, doom experiment. Uh, uh, we can see it depend on the mass. There are some resonant mixing with the pion, eta and eta prime. We can have uh, a lot, all those production rate uh, uh, sum. Just basically, people have been viewing the major axion production uh, at uh, 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 proton colliders uh, dominantly coming from their mixing with pion eta and eta prime. So people have been trying to effectively convert, uh, uh, you know, each uh, uh, production of pion, uh, the pseudo scalar standard model pseudo scalar mesons with uh, uh, their uh, corresponding mix angle squared to effectively approximate the axion flux, okay? So here we also include some form factor to, uh, 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 to uh, simulate the mass effect. Also, also we can include the gluon fusion uh, production above GeV scale. So that just gave us a sense about what's the axion flux in the, in the dune uh, setup, which is uh, very big because the dune near detector has a five meter by five meter panel. So you can think how many axion I'm going to accept. Uh, in this experiment. Uh, it's a huge amount, as we expect from an intensity uh, uh, device. Okay, Is so yeah, so so 
Uh, yeah, so Cynthia, your question is, can I take axion for meson decays? The answer is uh, yes, okay? So they are somewhat uh, effectively taken into account by the, uh, you know, by the pi eta eta prime uh, uh, flags, which means they both include the, the you know, direct production <laughs> is for hydroalization or the, the, the heavy meson decays. Of course, here we didn't assume there's a flavor of diagonal uh, couplings for the X from this axion like particles, which may I, have certain yeah, intensities okay. from, uh, from heavy yeah. meson. I don't, think, I don't think he's assuming that it's coming from pion and k on decay. Well, he's just assuming. In, in many fixed target type experiment, the dominant production is actually from k on decay, right? It, of course, it has to be light enough to introduce such a or B meson decay, so you can produce B meson. Right. I think yeah. since you are yeah. saying that if it's if the pions are being produced from kaon decays and your axion is heavier than a kaon, then no. you can't just multiply it by the. No, no, well, I'm, I'm saying uh, axion does come from kaon uh, flavor. Uh, flavor changing the case. K on to to the pion plus action. Yeah, but that won't happen for I mean I think his axions are like one G D, two G D and max, right? Uh, in the lower you can implement two. Okay. So if we're away, okay, but then we have to be below five hundred G D or well well below five hundred MEV. We have to be well below five hundred MEV, right? Yeah. So are you talking about what's the matter? I'll go B meson in this case too, right? So I just I well I yeah, yeah I don't know whether this thing fully take into account um this or not because in in many cases actually this flavor changing the case are the dominant production modes for the for the help uh uh so you, know, you, you have these peaks uh, from mixing this. Uh, uh, the, the so roughly the, below the, the pion peak, you should be fine. Yeah. You should be fine below the pion peak, right? But above the pion peak, you're saying there's an extra suppression. No, no, no. I'm saying there, there can be bigger suppression. Bigger yeah. than that. I'm, I'm, no, no, I don't know. I'm just asking for the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, so Cindy, I understand your question. You're you're, you're asking you're asking beyond the, the, those production modes. Uh, you know, yeah. meson decays can be uh, induced uh, uh, axia, especially when it's enhanced from the flavor of that couplings of the, the axia. Uh, maybe another important source. Uh, of course, oh, here we didn't yeah. include that uh, uh, that mode in the sense that we uh, we don't assume a, a large off diagonal uh, Yukawa term. Either for, we assume we don't. Well, we don't yeah, right. yeah. That's that's flavor changing. Uh, the K will be there anyway. It's uh, even you don't assume it, uh, it will be generated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Shimia, do you have more questions, or maybe we can talk about that after after okay. this? Yeah, so in fact, it's half, half of your sentence, uh, it's a bit hard to get. Maybe some of the audio system <laughs> didn't catch it. So, so I really only hear half of your comments. Um, in any case, of course, if there are other modes, you can include them and that will improve the limits. But here really, let's just say, we want to understand if we can see axioms uh, in, the, in such a setup and to make use of the high intensity of the system. Of course, it's really, uh, uh, you know, we can decay to uh, uh, die photons or a hadronic modes. So here I have to be very careful. First of all, the Dune is a fixed target experiment, 120 GeV beam on uh, the proton at the rest. The central mass energy is low. So I'm really only probing the low mass axioms. So then below GeV, I have to calculate all the exclusive modes and depend on the, uh, uh, Depend on the Wilson coefficients now, uh, it seems to become more tricky. And if, uh, for instance, the effective photon coupling, uh, axion coupled to photon has uh, several contributions like this. There's even a lot of cancellations between different terms, et cetera. So there's a, there's a bit more complex in the lifetime calculation. Um, the Xinjiang's paper also have a very nice uh, uh, um, uh, calculation for various exclusive mode. 
But uh, for different cases, we can consider the decay to photons or decay to hadrons. And what's the major background at the, the near detector in the liquid argon detector or the uh, uh, gaseous argon uh, uh, um, detector? So there are many handles one can treat on those uh, axion-like particle decays into hadrons and photons. Here we just show a typical distribution for the photon decay. Uh, their energy distribution and angular distribution, and one can we can one can consider and estimate the background to be uh, under control. So then we can check what the dual near det detectable do us. Uh, same plot axion mass versus the uh, uh, versus the axion gluon coupling. Uh, there's the displaced the track trigger LC search I talked about earlier. Here's the new dual near detector projection. You can see it's very complementary to the Hidumi to the LT searches. In fact, they don't really even overlap in their in the in the in the sensitivity, due to the configuration, the different nature of the uh, the experimental setup, and they together really covers the uh, you know a much larger region of the uh, uh, of the axion like uh, motivated like axion like particle region. I think it shows a very exciting uh, opportunity for particle physics. I'm really uh, sorry. Photonic coupling only, they can cover this region. Oh, sorry. No, sorry, I, I got it, never mind, go ahead, yeah. never mind. Okay, yeah, so, so, this, uh, uh, so this is the, 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 the picture, uh, I, the, my other work uh, recently with uh, junior colleagues. Uh, so uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, so let me just briefly mention my ongoing work, uh, two pieces of my ongoing work. Uh, I, I will just give you a brief flavor, okay? So then I'm asking this question, do we really know the gluonic ALP production, okay? Just let's recall how crude our, the input we used. And uh, believe me, what we used was the state of our calculation, what the, you know, what our people use uh, by and large, okay? So the left panel is the LHC production. Axion mass, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we have different PT cut, but we can clearly see the unphysical regime. You know, when axial mass goes low, there's no reason to expect the rate to become smaller. Okay, especially the inclusive rate. It's really because some um, uh, you know ge generator choice and uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, a strong coupling uh, choice and uh, you know uh, PDF choice they they suddenly shrink unphysical. Okay, we know physically axial rate will increase at least uh, stay flat because once you put some uh, you know, energy cut. So LC simulation fails in this region, okay? And for the dune production, we are doing something really ad hoc, right? We effectively say every pi on eta eta prime has the theta, the mixing angle squared chance to convert to an axion. We manually shift the momentum uh, to do that, okay? To, to generate the kinematics, okay? This is super ad hoc, as we know, the axion mixing angle is, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, to the pseudo-scalar mesons, it's rotation dependent. I can decide how I rotate the axion gluonic coupling to fermions. We uh, uh, are the redefinition of the, the quark fields, okay? So can we do something better? Okay, so this is really my ongoing work with the, uh, our excellent po postdoc Quinn Feng Li at the um, uh, Minnesota. Okay, we can consider as uh, Shinya already inclined, we can uh, indicate that we can consider meson decays, mixing with mesons, half scattering, pardon splitting, bram strong, et cetera. There's so many modes. Okay, so we actually consider each of them individually and estimate the size. Eventually we find the bram strong seem to be an important piece and very nice piece that allows us to do another more controlled calculation, okay? So, so what's that, okay? So uh, the, the, we, can have proton, we can have partons uh, or protons. They can emit a pseudo-scalar mass uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, so-called the bram strong process. It's an initial state of radiation, okay? Our primary preliminary result shows the parton bramming is so very small in the forward direction. So we focus on the proton bramming. So proton emits the uh, axial without, with the low momentum exchange so, so that the proton is not disintegrated and they participate in the next uh, hard scattering, okay? So it's a, a primary contribution that we can use the, uh, you know, 
uh, uh, there are several pieces. We can use the factorize the treatment of pro proton priming to an axion to proton prime, go through the hard scattering, introducing uh, several form factors in this uh, splitting uh, uh, calculation. Okay, uh, that uh, details uh, I, I don't have time to go over. Uh, but what's nice and beyond what have been done in the literature, uh, you know, in the treatment is we realize that the effective axion, of course, the Bramming probability is proportional to the, uh, uh, to the effective operator of the coupling between axion to protons. We can write down the effective operator. It actually is having three components, okay? The component is, three components are what two pieces we are already familiar if you have worked in this, uh, in this uh, details. Is one axion coupled to the uh, 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 two protons through their kinematic mixing with other pseudoscalar standard model masses. The second piece is mass mixing. And there is a third piece because I can rotate the gluon coupling to, uh, uh, to, uh, to qu axion to quarks. Quarks uh, have wave function overlap with the, with the proton. So axion should couple to proton directly. So I have a three piece of axion coupling to proton. Previously, people only included the latter two pieces. The result is actually axion rotation dependent. So if you write down the, the chiral, uh, Lagrangian and heavy barrier effective theory for all the axion coupling to protons, uh, and, and there is leading order expansion, you can, you can find the coefficient for all those pieces. And at a low energy massless limit, you will match the known result of PDG on the axion coupling to proton neutrons, et cetera. But what's important is now I'm doing an axion-like particle whose mass is floating. So all those pieces matters and how they scale matters, okay? And so, uh, and again, realizing this piece uh, is crucial to get deriving a result that is rotation independent on the rotation and uh, give us a consistent result for the axion production. For instance, here's the axion gluon coupling as a function of axion mass in this three uh, flavor chiral perturbation theory. We can see uh, the at low energy is dominated by the uh, uh, mass mixing and the the uh, the proton coup to, coupling to proton directly. At high energy, there's a very subtle cancellation between all those those three terms and uh, goes like this. Okay, the two flavor chiral perturbation is just demonstration to show you how things can be wrongly estimated uh, without uh, eta and eta prime. This is nice to be nice work done by the end of last year to have some time to understand. Uh, 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 in this, in this uh, uh, effective theory, okay? So with this uh, treatment, we can put in things into work and uh, into a calculation at the forward facility uh, from proton priming. With our calculation, we can improve, uh, we, can, uh, we can show the phaser can uh, probe axion-like particles in this uh, regime, right? Importantly, we really have the improved the consistent treatment of the, the proton priming calculation. And comparing to other uh, projections, including our my own previous work, this again covers some uh, unique regimes uh, between LC, uh, uh, Downy particle search, and the Dune ER detector. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm sorry to run out of time. Uh, I will skip the last part, which I was playing with some existing data to look for dimuons uh, with my. Uh, uh, you know, my, my other collaborators where I did uh, uh, a mini charge particle search. We're just having some uh, new results uh, with experimental data, uh, with the experimental collaboration to show axion became to die muon can be constrained uh, 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 in this plan, mass versus the, the decay constant, okay? Um, so let me just summarize, okay? Gluonic ALP are interesting to search for. It can be motivated by a strong CP pattern and the quality problem. The production, decay, and search strategy all have very interesting and unique uh, features that are requires uh, you know uh, exploration. We make some uh, 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 you know baby step in those directions, and uh, I think it has impact and has uh, imprints on all particle facilities, including LC, four detectors, neutrino experiment, etc. So here is one of my old plot, but hopefully we'll be able to add the, the you know other neutrino experiments and also the the uh, the, up, the updated phaser coverage on those summary plots. That's all I want to uh, say. Thank you. Thanks very much.
I think we we asked a lot of questions during your your talk, so I'm going to kind of suggest we uh, we thank thank uh, Jing again, and then if if you would be willing to stick around for those who want to talk a little bit more, is that does that sound okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's thank him again, and if people are need to be somewhere, they can they can leave. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was really nice. Yeah.